everyone, we're down in Otago, so about four hours south from where I normally am. We're gonna see if we can find some fossils. Uh, this beach over here, I've been to about four or five times, and you either find something amazing or you find nothing at all. So, well, let's hope it's one of those amazing days. What we're looking at on this beach is we're looking closely at the bits of mudstone. It's got lots of chlorconite. And there's also some pretty agates. So that's not a not a bad one. But there are some nicer ones over down here. The ones that are a lot clearer. That might just be some some quartz for this one. This is the cliff where the fossils are eroding from. And this is the Eocene mudstone. So like 50 million years old, lots of green glauconite in it. And then we've got some sulfur coming out. I think this is actually sulfur. It smells like sulfur. And then above it, we've got river gravels or beach gravels. I think it's river gravels. You can see those stones there, little cobblestones. They're nice and rounded, so it tells us they've either come down a river or from the beach. And I don't see any shell material, which normally points towards a uh, river. And then this is just a weathered strip of the, the mudstone. And you can see how it's actually eroded the mudstone away and deposited that more modern cobblestones, river cobblestones on there. One of the things I learned in Geology 101 was this will be older than that. I forget what the actual <laughs> term is, something about the depositional order. So older to younger over there. And that's, uh, I don't think that's an unconformity because those are both sedimentary deposits. But yeah, there's, there might be, there might be a, a big gap of time missing over here, which I think it is. So it might go from 50 million years over here to like half a million years over there. So there's an unconformity over there. There's a little bit of a septarian concretion sticking out there, some calcite. So that would glow very nicely under UV light. Looks like there's a whole bunch of trace fossils in here. Like all these holes and burrows over here that have been filled in. But in between here, there's definitely micro fossils, so like it almost looks like fish ear bones. Look at this layer down here. Definitely something going on here. Yeah? Just gonna spend a bit of time here, see if I find anything interesting. Like when you find a layer like this, you can see there's lots of fossils in there. It's a good place to look for shark teeth. Here's some more trace fossils down here, where there used to be a burrow or something. After not finding too many fossils, I headed up the coast for a walk and came across these seals just sleeping in the grass. I think these are fur seals and they've got breeding colonies all across the South Island of New Zealand. I had another beach I wanted to check out today, so I headed back north, of course stopping over at the book barn just to see if they've got any interesting fossil geology books.
It's in the middle of the screen there and I, I noticed it because it's quite a different color and I can see a little bit of what I think are growth rings on the side there or at least some woody texture. Let's see if we can dig it out. Yeah, I'll call that petrified wood. It definitely looks like some woody texture over there. It's very weird colors. It's got like red and yellows in it. That's quite cool. Here it is after a bit of a wash. Some really beautiful colors. You can definitely see some growth rings on the side there. That's cool. I think that's a piece of petrified wood stuck in this rock over here. Don't think it's bone. It's in quite a large rock. There's a few belemnites and rocks in the top section there. Very beautiful piece. So many of these rocks have belemnites in them. There's a tiny vertebra. Just so many fossils around. There's a nice little shark tooth on there. I don't know if the root's in there still. It might be. That's a cool little one. Pretty complete. Oh, there's an awesome piece of bone in there. Quite a, quite a decent size. And there's some other ones in here too. See there as well. I wonder what it's from. I'm gonna guess a plesiosaur or a mosasaur. Yeah, that's that's quite a distinctive bone there. In of course the biggest rock. <laughs> I'm sure I actually saw some bones on the other side, which is the ones I saw at first. Yeah, that might be one over there too. I can't really tell for sure. But it's on the same level as this one, so it makes sense if there are bones are going through this rock. Very cool. Another nice little tiny shark tooth in there. Not sure if I'm going to take that home. <laughs> it's rather a large rock for a tiny tooth. Might just leave it here for the next person. Have a look at all these sheets of mica in here. Some beautiful mica. They're real soft. You can actually pry them away with your fingernails. There's little sheets. So cool. Never seen this much in one area. That's so cool. Look how shiny those ones are. If your car's paint shimmers or if you've got makeup that's got sparkly bits in them, there's a good chance that it's actually ground up mica like this that's giving it that sparkle. You can see here how mica forms as these two dimensional sheets, almost like the pages of a book. I had one more stop I wanted to make on the way home, which was this beautiful lighthouse. Still in use. Automatic now, there's no lighthouse keeper there. And just look at the view here, it's beautiful. The days are definitely starting to get shorter, the temperature's getting cooler, winter is just around the corner. Thanks for joining me everyone, stay safe and I'll see you on the next hunt.